All right, so first step is to guess the directions of current in each branch. My E1 is 1.5 volts. E2, 4 volts. Now you want to pay close attention to which resistor is called R1 and which one is 2 and 3. So typically what I do is when I guess my directions of current, I'll call the current that's associated with R3, I'll call it I3. And the current associated with R2 is I2. It helps me to not get confused about which current I'm talking about. So I see that we've got a positive plate here. There's a clear path for positive charges to flow to the negative plate. So I'm going to guess that the current flows to the right in that section. But I'm going to call it I3 because this is R3, you know. Over here, we've got 4 volts, and there's a positive plate. So it's conceivable that current could flow to the left through this section. I'll call that I2. And I believe it's a good guess to think that current's going to flow down here because then it can return to the negative plates. Yeah, so that's I1. All right, now that I have those guesses made, now I'll write my loop law equations. So I typically do one loop and then another loop, and then I'll do a junction law equation. Okay, so my first loop is going to be this one on the left here. I'll call that loop one. And then over here, this can be loop two. Doesn't matter where you start. As long as you end where you started and it doesn't matter what direction you go either but for loop one I want to pick a particular point on the circuit and then imagine what would what would it be like if I was a positive charge to go through all of these elements so first if you're a positive charge you would get bumped up in energy as you go through the battery you gain energy Okay, so you're going to start off with 0 equals plus 1.5 volts. Okay, because we're going to add 1.5 when we go from negative plate to positive plate. Then, as we go from this point to this point, we're going to go through a resistor. But we're going in the direction of current. Right, so I need to lose voltage through that section. So I would do minus, and I'm going to do I3 times R3, and R3 is 3.5 ohms. I'll leave the units off, though. Then I'm going to be going through R1, so I want to subtract that voltage and that's it like that completes my first loop but that's what I have so far for loop 2 I'll start at this point I'll go clockwise okay but when I go from this point to uh, the other side I see that we're going against current if we're going against current, 
then we're going to add potential that time. How much potential? It would be I1 times R1, which was 1 ohm. OK, so when we went down through the middle branch, we subtracted the potential. But when we go up through the middle branch, we would add it. The reason I'm going up is because I want to follow this loop direction clockwise. All right, then I go to R2, but I see that we're going against current once again. So we want to add I2 times the 4.5 ohms. Finally, we're here at the battery, but we're not going from negative plate to positive plate anymore. Now we're going positive to negative. So we're going to want to subtract that voltage, so minus 4. Uh, okay, so now we can write our junction law. We see in our junction, though, that we have I3 coming in from the left. We have I2 coming in from the right. And then I1 leaves through the middle. So that's going to be our junction law, then. I2 plus I3 equals I1. It's based on the flow of current this time rather than the potential. So those are going to be my three equations. That's all we need, just three different equations for the three unknowns. I want to put them into like a uh, system of equations solver at this point. So I'll rename them in terms of easy to use letters. Okay, these were the results that Symbolab gave me. And you just want to be careful because sometimes Symbolab reverses the natural order of the variables. But it's basically telling me that I1 is 83 over 95, which is 0.874 amps. I2 is going to be 66 over 95, which is 0.695 amps. And then I3 is 17 over 95, 0.179 amps. All right, so that's good progress. This question is a little tough because it's asking, what's the rate of energy dissipation in the resistors, though? So we're going to want to use the formula P equals V times I. Or if we want to avoid finding the voltage, we could substitute in IR for V. And that would bring us to the new formula, I squared times R. That'd be the easiest one to use since we have the currents. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll do P1 equals I1 squared times R. OK, yeah, so I think here I've multiplied all the currents squared times their um, associated resistors. So I'm getting 0.764 watts for the first one, 2.17 watts for R2, 
and 0 0.112 watts there. Yeah, so when we're getting the power of the cells, we got to multiply the voltage times the current in that cell. So we said this was 0.179 amps here. And then I2 was 0.695 amps. So it's going to be the same currents through the batteries. So the power of battery one is going to be 1.5 volts times 0.179 amps. And then the power of battery two will be four volts times 0.695 amps. Point two six nine watts two point seven eight watts. Yep, that finishes it.